Hey guys, what's going on? Dijon here. So I want to try something new, something different, and this is what it kind of came out to. So in the back, you'll see some pre-recorded gameplay. This was just from a few days ago. I got the 30 minutes in hell achievement. And let me tell you, this achievement is no joke. You will fail many times trying to get this if you're like me. So don't be discouraged by that. I also want to give a big shout out to Creamy Lou for the strategy I'm using today, or as he likes to call it, the Creamy strategy. So basically what the idea is, is you release uh, a bunch of puppets, specifically uh, Czechoslovakia into a little bit, uh, into a little puppet. You uh, get rid of Ukraine and you get rid of Belarus. And a major part you gotta do, you do not forget this part. You gotta give back territory to Lithuania. Otherwise the USSR will declare on you and then attack you and capitulate you by taking <laughs> your territory over there. So don't forget that part. That's a part that Lou forgot to put in his video, I believe. And you will get wrecked if you forget that. Okay, so let's get into the meat and potatoes of this video. So a main thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna switch your templates up. This is gonna be so so important for uh, your equipment and your supply so you're gonna change all your units down to a 16 with combat uh, infantry template that has engineers as a support company and then you're also gonna make a secondary duplicate template of that and the only difference between your duplicate template is you're gonna add in AA support into it so that's just gonna help fight against the uh, German air because Trust me when I say there's a lot of German air, they're gonna have the, uh, the Stukas raining down on you, like, consistently. So yeah, make sure you don't delete any units or anything like that. You're just gonna put them in a nice fallback line once you release Czechoslovakia as a puppet. You're gonna put them in a fallback line that makes a little horseshoe shape. Um, and how you line your troops up is kind of up to you, but uh, there's a few different ways to do it. Um, you'll see later, I actually put everybody into a garrison order in Sweden. And then on top of that garrison order, I make a front line with my field marshal. Um, this is known as the front line field marshal exploit. Some people call it a feature, some people call it an exploit, just depends what side of the fence you sit on on that one. I had to use it because it does give you the extra planning bonus, and that is so important to holding. I mean, at the start of the game, if you don't use it, you're going to miss out on a ton of equipment. And you'll actually notice at the start, I have everybody into separate generals, but when using the uh, frontline exploit or the field marshal exploit, you can actually put them all into one general, and that's going to save you command power and all that when you're leveling your generals up. So a lot of people are going to say, don't build forts, but don't listen to them. Forts are going to be exactly what keep you alive in this situation. They're going to get blown up by the bunker busters a ton, but just keep repairing them. I mean, you can put it into factories, but at the rate the Germans are attacking you, there's not going to be the amount of guns that you're really going to produce them at the start anyway. And you're going to see I use a specific technique to do that. So I put the military factories that you start building from the start of the game uh, in the province that you hold, just about uh, south of Krakow. And uh, what you do is you put your military factories at the very bottom of the queue, and then you queue up, level 10 forts everywhere else in all that horseshoe shape that you hold, and you put it towards the top. And what that's going to do is it's actually going to make it so anytime the Germans are attacking you, you're not going to be building forts, you're going to be building military factories, and then vice versa. If you're not attacking those tiles, you're actually going to be building forts. And it doesn't happen too often until you start to get a little bit stronger, but once you do, it is like exponential growth on your forts. Okay, let's quickly go over what uh, advisors and high command you want. So to start off, take the defensive high command, obviously. You're going to be trying to always max out the defensive stats you can. That in the entrenchment stats. So anytime you see an advisor or a, a, a bonus, a upgrade, a, anything that gives you a little bit more entrenchment or defense, take it. And for military advisors, you're also going to want to take the army advisor and the tank advisor. So uh, why the tank advisor? He actually gives you more daily XP, which is going to be important long term. I also take the war industrialist. And other than that, I take the infantry equipment research speed bonus. That's about all I take for that. And then I save the rest of my PP for uh, both. Don't forget this. This is super important for Scorch Earth tactics. So it slows the Germans coming in. And then you also spend it on going war economy and extensive conscription right away as soon as the war starts. I mean, pause and do that. You cannot forget to do that. For your field marshal, make sure you take the guy who doesn't have the defensive doctrine and then just upgrade him to have the defensive doctrine and make sure you get the reinforcement rate upgrade as well. So that's going to help when you're cycling your troops back into tiles while the Germans attack you. Super important. You'll also be gaining the upgrade to get quicker entrenchment on your generals. Make sure you take that as soon as you can. There's a lot of really good ones. 
for research, you're always going to be researching infantry equipment and the bonuses that come with that. And you're also going to be researching your uh, engineer companies so you can get higher entrenchment. And lastly, you're going to be always getting the anti-air upgrade. So those four upgrades are the ones you're just going to progressively research even if it's ahead of time. For the focuses, you're going to take the castle, prepare for the inevitable. That one is so important because it gives you all the guns you need to reinforce all your divisions. Then you're also going to follow that up by going sanctions right, sanctions left, and then you follow the focus tree all the way down sanctions left. After that, you can take whatever focus you want, but I like to take the one that makes the infantry equipment cheaper. For your army spirits, I like to take tenacious defense, elevated engineer corp, and static warfare. Those are going to help get your most max entrenchment and defense bonuses. Okay, so now you can see that the war is kicked off, and as the Germans slowly came in, I made sure to scorch my territory. Another little tactic I did was I put up 100 fighters that I had in stockpile and 50 cas, and I actually put them in Ukraine to, to try and give me a little bit of air support. I don't know if it actually does anything, but I just thought it was funny because I don't have an airport in my own country, but they can still reach through a, uh, a neutral nation. And here is a great demonstration of how to use this build. So what you're going to do is continuously take your units that get pushed into the center tile there, that little center tile that the enemies cannot attack, so they constantly can organize in there and you just cycle them back into your other tiles so you can see my bubbles will go yellow and red and all i do is i take my units that previously got retreated and cycle them into those tiles and boom you'll never run out of organization on your units also another thing to note is as i'm constantly making factories i'm putting them on guns and keeping just one on supported equipment and one on aa to start just so i build that efficiency so I think I've explained enough so far. If you have any questions about any other part of this build, just ask in the comments. I will be more than happy to reply to anything and explain what I did or any orders I took on anything. Um, also, everything that you see in the video is exactly what I did to get the achievement. This is the exact run, um, so it does work if you follow it pretty similar. <laughs>
and you've made it this far, congratulations, you beat 30 minutes in hell. I know it's probably been a challenge for you as well as it was for me. Don't forget, it took me 19 tries to get it right. So, in comparison, I think you did pretty good. Anyway, if you liked the video, go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know if it could have used anything more or if it was right on the dot for what you guys like for the content. Uh, don't be afraid to give it a rating and, uh, you know, come and join the Discord. There's been a lot of people coming in lately and I'd love to see you in there. All right, peace guys.